Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so glad you're joining us today for Jesus the Healer. Welcome. This is our living room, so to speak, for our television broadcast. So we invite you to come in, bring your Bible with you, bring a notepad and bring your faith yes. because it's what you expect is what you receive. And so we're so grateful to take this time to share the word with you today. Um, I'm going to, in past, I'm going to go further today and in upcoming episodes in a direction that really is going to tag on to something that I preached in some, in some previous episodes. I don't know if you've been able to watch them, but I taught on in previous episodes on the three primary ways that sickness can enter the life of the believer. Yeah. How the three primary ways we open the door yes. to sickness. Yes. Uh, we're redeemed from sickness. Amen. But you know what Paul said in Ephesians 4, 27, he said, neither give place to the devil. Right. So um, although we're redeemed from sickness, we have to keep the door closed to the enemy Amen. because he is looking for access yes. <laughs> into yes. our lives. And um, I was in a service years ago with my husband. He was holding a miracle service and he had me to come up at the end of the service and he said, God has something he wants you to say. Well, I just took off praying in other tongues, praying in the spirit. And then I interpreted back three things that God said is three primary ways that we can open the door to sickness, yeah. to defeat, yeah. to the devil. And I want to touch on those real quickly because then we're going to go past that and tag on. So the first, what, the first primary way, now these aren't the only ways, right. but the primary ways. Yes. And um, God said to us that night, he says, number one, through the loss of peace, that when we, right. when we step outside of peace, we step into the fear flow. We yes. step into the worry That's flow. Right. We step into the doubt flow. Mm -hmm. Those things rob us of peace. Yes. And yes. I want you to look with me uh, at Mark chapter 5, verse 34, the Amplified Classic Translation. Uh, we know this is the woman with the issue of blood. Remember how she pressed through the crowd and she touched Jesus' garment because she said, if I can but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Right. And she was, made, she was made whole. After she testified to Jesus that she had received her healing, this is what he said to her in Mark 5, verse 34. He said to her, daughter, your faith your trust and confidence in me uh -huh. springing from faith in God has restored you to health. Now she's received her healing. The next phrase, he's going to tell her how to keep it. Right. That's right. So he makes the statement, go in to peace and be continually healed and freed from your distressing bodily disease. Mm -hmm. Now notice that he connected her going into peace to living free wow. from yes. that disease. Yes. So Jesus connected our health to our peace. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So this is one of the primary ways that God said to us that night in the service that Christians can open the door to sickness is they lose their peace. They sip out of peace. Mm -hmm. That's right. They yield That's right. to a different flow other than peace. Uh -huh. Listen, when you got born again, the fruit of the Spirit is, is put on the inside of you. The Holy yes. Ghost yes. imparts yes. the fruit of the Spirit in you. And one of those fruits is peace. Right. 
Why? Because when something comes that isn't peace, you can resist it and draw on the peace that's in you. You don't have to wait for God to give you peace. It's already in you to draw on, yield to, stir it up and draw it out. And so he was telling this woman, don't get into a flow outside of peace because it will rob your health from you. So notice Jesus connected our peace to our health. Yes, yes. How many of you know worry will break down the mind, yes, yes. Yes. That's right. which will break down the body? Yes. Yes. Fear. Yes. How many times uh, people have had uh, just physical issues because they, they stayed mm-hmm. in a place of fear? Right. Yeah. Fear comes to all of us, but we reject it. We, we resist it. But if someone continually operates and yields to it, mm-hmm. it can start having an effect on them physically. Yeah. Yeah. And so here we see that through the loss of peace, yielding to fear, mm-hmm. yielding to worry, mm-hmm. yielding to doubt, mm-hmm. robs us of our peace. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Really, um, worry, let, let me put it to you this way. Fear and doubt get together and they have an offspring called worry. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Fear and doubt give birth to worry. Yeah. And we're redeemed from all of that. (laughs) I said, we're redeemed from all of it. So God said to us in that service, through the loss of peace, people open the door to sickness or defeat, any other area. It can, it can affect them financially if they, if they lose their peace. It can affect their marriage. But we're focusing on healing, and we see the direct link in the Word with healing and our peace. Jesus was saying to her, go in peace, and you'll, and you'll keep yourself in a flow of healing. The second thing God said to us of how we open the door to sickness, how we open the door to the devil, how we open the door to defeat, that night he said is veering from the plan of God. There's a plan for, that God has authored for each and every one of us. Amen. And in that plan is the best life. Yes, <laughs> but if we choose to go a different direction, mm-hmm. go a different flow, yeah. then we, we're going to step out of the best that he, that he planned for us. Right. I want to read to you Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. And this is the Amplified Classic Translation. It reads, for we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship. And then it tells us what that handiwork is that he undertook for us. He recreated us Mm -hmm. in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined and planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time. Before time ever started being measured on this earth, God prepared a plan for your life. And notice what it says that we're to take the paths that he planned. We're to take the paths that he prepared for us. So even though he planned those paths, it's up to us to take them. He can't force us to take them. He only offers it to us. And we choose to agree and we take his plan for our life. Now notice what the Amplified says further about this, about his plan, that we should walk in them, those paths that he planned for us, that we should walk in them, look at this, living the good life. I love that. Living the good life. That's the only thing he planned for us was a good life. He didn't plan the hard life. He didn't plan the troubled life. He didn't plan the crisis life. He didn't plan a tragedy life. He planned the good life. And it says that we should walk in these paths that he planned living the good life. Listen, if we're not living the good life, check what path you're on. There you go. That's right. That's right. Because... Uh, He planned the good life. Now, even though that path that he planned for us is fully stocked with all his blessings, fully, fully prepared with all that we're going to need as we walk out that path, we still have to use our faith to gather up what he prepared for us. So it won't, all he's provided for us won't just drop on us. We have to use our faith, release our faith, and with our faith, gather up the fullness of provision that's on the paths of his plan. 
So it says again that we should walk in them, walk in these paths, living the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So his path, his plan is just waiting for you to show up. (laughs) Amen. Amen. So we see this, that God only planned the good life. How many of you know the good life is not the sick life? That's right. He did not plan sickness for us. Amen. And um, to live out his plan, to live the good life is to live the healed life. That's right. Amen. And to receive healing Amen. if you're in need of healing. Yes. God said this to me uh, in writing. I, I wrote a book called God, the Revealer of Secrets, where I talk about the plan of God. Um, in that, as I was writing that book, God spoke to me and said, make my people to know that long life is connected to my plan. Mm -hmm. Meaning this, we can't just live any plan we want and think it's going to arrive us at his best. His plan will arrive us at his best. So his plan, his best for us is healing. His best for us is wholeness. His best for us is long life. Well, that's found on on the paths of his plan. I love something that Brother Copeland says. He says this, the will of God is your wealthy place. The will of God is your wealthy place. He's talking about, yes, it will be a place where you'll, you'll prosper, but it's more than just your financial prosperity. Your health will be wealthy. Yes, Your marriage will be rich. Your home will be filled with all good things. Amen. So the will of God is where everything of your life is enriched. Every arena of your life is enriched, including your health. So um, God planned his plan for us. It's up to us to take it. That's right. Amen. So the, f- the first thing that God told us that night in that service that opens the door to sickness, to defeat or to the devil is to step outside of peace, lose our peace, yes. yield to something other than mm-hmm. peace. The mm-hmm. second thing is to veer from the plan of God, right. to cast his plan aside mm-hmm. or to not take notice of what his plan is or not be mindful. Mm-hmm. Am I in his plan? Mm-hmm. The third thing that the Spirit of God said to us that night was the lack of gratitude. Mm -hmm. Lack of gratitude will open the door to sickness. Lack of gratitude will open the door to the devil. Mm -hmm. Lack of gratitude will open the door to defeat. Most people would not ever connect defeat with lack of gratitude. That's true. But I want, just know this, what we're grateful for Mm -hmm. We're watchful over. Yes. Amen. 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 When we're not grateful, we're not giving something proper attention. Yes. Yes. That's right. Um, what we're not grateful for, the devil can steal from us, and we, he's, he's, he can take it before we've even noticed it sometimes. Yes. That's true. Yes. Because our lack of gratitude opens the door to the devil. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to read to you Deuteronomy chapter 28. Verses 47 and 48. Now, this is the Amplified Classic Translation. It reads, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness of mind and heart in gratitude for the abundance of all with which he has blessed you, therefore you shall serve your enemies. Notice that. Lack of gratitude for all that he's blessed us with, all that he's done for us. Uh, lack of gratitude uh, opens the door to the enemy because, like I said, what we're not grateful of, we're not mindful of. And if we're not mindful of, we're not watching. You know how it tells us over in Ephesians how to be be vigilant, Mm -hmm. be watchful. Why? Because there's a thief. Satan is looking to steal, kill, and destroy. When you get up and you say, Father, thank you for my health today. That, that keeps the door closed to the enemy Amen. because you are releasing your faith yeah. over what he's blessed you with right. and his power meets faith. Yeah. Amen. So our health, whether we realize it or not, is connected to us walking in peace. Mm-hmm. Our health is connected to staying in the plan of God for yes. our life yes. and our health is connected to our gratitude. Amen. Now, 
I spent four months on the daily broadcast teaching on the first thing, the loss of peace. What was I teaching on? I was teaching on the mind oh, yes. because that is so critical to us to not lose our peace because, listen, the devil's going to attack everyone's mind. He's going to attack, and you have to, you have to know what skill regarding the mental arena looks like. Right. And so I spent four months teaching on that. What I'm going to take off on teaching today, going further, is going to address number two and three, veering from the plan of God Amen. and uh, gratitude. Yes. If we will stay in the plan of God for our life, be interested in what he has for our life. Right. Yes. Amen. Don't just mindlessly yeah. make decisions. Ask him. Look to him. Mm -hmm. He leads and guides us. And we have to show him more interest. He won't force his plans right. on us. That's right. That's right. We have to invite him. Uh -huh. Amen. Amen. And uh, when we do that, it will, it's directly connected to our health. Wow. With whether or not we're in the plan of God for our life. Um, built into his plan is our well-being. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. And then also gratitude. Now, turn with me. Now we're going to arrive at really my, my jumping off point here. Uh, Psalms chapter 112. Yes. I want you to go yes. and we'll go there with me and we'll start reading in verse one. Psalms yes. 112 and verse one. It reads, praise ye the Lord. Yes. Now listen. When you read a scripture like that, praise ye the Lord, then stop and do it. Yeah. Don't just say, praise ye the Lord and keep reading. He's giving us a directive. We're doers of the word, right? So let's say it, praise ye the Lord. So we say, praise the Lord. Amen. And then it goes on and it says, blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. Here he's talking about a reverence and an honor right. and a respect and a regard for, for the God who has blessed us. Wow. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the man that, that fears the Lord. Look at this next phrase, that delighteth greatly yes. in his commandments. Yes. Delighteth greatly in his commandments. We're going to go on reading and then we're going to come back to this first verse and spend some time here. But I want you to look what's connected mm -hmm. to the man who praises the Lord, mm -hmm. to the man who honors and fears and reverences the Lord, and to the man who delights greatly in what God says to him. Verse 2 tells us what's going to happen to this man. His seed shall be mighty yes. upon the yes. earth. Yes. His seed. Your children, your offspring. Yes. What about this? The seeds you've sown in ministry. Amen. What about your seeds of generosity? Yes. All, you know, your life is a seed. Right. How you're sowing your life yes. into other people and in, yes. into That's God's good. plan. Amen. Yes. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. That means your seed won't dry up and yes. not produce. That's right. Your seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Now look at this. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. Oh, just by doing verse one, just by doing verse one, wealth and riches shall be in his house. Look at this. And his righteousness endureth forever. I love something that brother Copeland says about this verse. He said, this blessed man, he's wealthy, he's rich, and his righteousness is still intact. He did not compromise his conscience. He right. did not compromise yeah. his righteousness. He did not go the way of the world to try to gather wealth. Uh, yes. He went the way of the word. Right. Amen. Amen. And the word made him rich. Uh -huh. yes. Amen. Yeah. Verse four says, unto the upright, there ariseth light in the darkness. Well, what does that mean? It means this, that uh, to the man who does verse one, mm -hmm that there will come light. What's light? Revelation. Uh -huh. yes. It will be revealed to him the answers he needs in the dark. Amen. That when he encounters a dark place, yeah. he'll know exactly what to do. Right. He'll have the light yeah. of yes. what to do that will deliver out of that place of darkness and it will run darkness out of right. his life. Amen. 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 So this man who does verse one comes into the revelation, the wisdom of God. Yeah. Revelation is simply the wisdom of God. Right. Revelation is the mind of God, the thoughts of God. Yes. Amen. Yes. 
So verse four, unto the upright, there ariseth light or revelation in the darkness. Because why? Lightness runs out darkness. Darkness yeah, cannot right. comprehend the light is yes. what the word says. A good man showeth favor and lendeth. Look at this. This man who does verse one has so much money, he's a lending institution. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And his wealth is now turning around and blessing other people and it's just multiplying for him. A good man shows favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. When you do verse one, you'll know how to handle your life. You'll know how to handle your business. You'll know how to handle the situations of life that arise. It goes on and says, surely he shall not be moved forever. This means he's not blown about by the winds that come. Right. When economy changes, it, it doesn't blow him in the wrong place. Oh, that's right. yes. that's right. it, it means that he is just constant. Right. constant. And that's one thing we love about God. He's the same yesterday, yeah. today, and yeah. forever. That's and right. when we obey him, it makes us the same way. Yes. We're constant. We're not moved with crisis. When tragedy comes, it doesn't throw us into a hole of depression. Right. We're, we're st- we stay constant mm-hmm. on the word. Right, right. When the emergencies of life show up, we're constant. We know Amen. what to do. Yes. Amen. And it says, the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. Yes. What's that mean? That when you walk in your righteousness mm-hmm. and you are, you're made right mm-hmm. with God right. by the blood of Jesus. Jesus made us right. What's this mean? We're always in the thoughts of God. Oh, he God. will not forget yes. us. We are yes. in his remembrance. Yes. Amen. It's like, Amen. it's like that rainbow that's around the yeah. throne of God. Right. What's it remind him of? Noah. Noah. Yes. Uh-huh. Right? Yes. Right. Well, uh, w- when, when we walk in, light, w- in line with verse 1 that we read, that uh, we can know this, we're ever in God's remembrance. We're not forgotten by heaven. Amen. Never forgotten. Yes. Never forgotten. Amen. Verse 7 goes on and says, This man who does verse 1, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed. He's trusting in the Lord. What's that mean? He's not trusting in circumstances. When circumstances fluctuate, the man doesn't fluctuate because his faith is not in the circumstances. His faith is in what is constant, God. His faith is in the one who does not change. God doesn't need to change. When you're perfect, you don't need to change. (laughs) That's why he's unchanging. And when your faith is in him then no matter what changes around you, it does not make you unsettled Mm -hmm. because you recognize I'm hooked up with something that is enduring beyond these circumstances. It's an amazing chapter here. Verse 8 says, His heart is established. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's it established on? It's established in the Word. Mm -hmm. To establish the word in you, you have to take time to build the word in you through meditating on it. Yes. Um, we know Joshua chapter 1, verse 8 This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate in it day and night. What's that mean? It's your lifestyle. That you're more, that the word has your interest. Yes. That when you have moments throughout the day, maybe in between work, your, your thoughts are toward the word. You just, you so love the word, you're captivated by that word. And you meditate on that word. To meditate on it means to mutter it to yourself, speak it to yourself, roll it around on the inside of you, build it in you. The only word, the only part of God's word that will work for you is the part you get in you. Yeah. Not yeah. just in your mind. Yeah. Yes, your mind needs the word, but you get it in your heart. Right. You get it in your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And notice it says in verse 8, this man's heart is established. Mm-hmm. Yes. He has taken the time to make the word part of his being. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. He yeah. has fed that word into himself, yeah. into his spirit, into his yeah. mind. He has fed it in and it's established him. He's, he's sure-footed. He's not walking on rocky ground. He's not working, walking on uncertain sand. 
Yes. He is established. Yes. Amen. His heart is established. Verse 8 says, His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. How many of you know when the Word is in you, it keeps fear out? That's That's right. Right. Amen. The Amen. more Word you get in you, yes. the more it runs fear out of yes. you. Yes. Amen. Amen. He shall not be afraid. Until, meaning this, he has the opportunity to be afraid. Yeah. Fear yeah. will come, the opportunity yeah. that fear threatens will come, but it won't, it won't affect him. Won't. Why? Because he's already established yeah. on the word. That's yes. right. Amen. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid. What frightens others won't frighten him. That's, right. That's good. Amen. What, make other, what makes others waver won't make him right. waver. Yes. He's established. Yes. Yes. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he sees his desire upon his enemies. Amen. Meaning this, the devil never wins never. in this man's life. Amen. Amen. Never, Amen. Never, never. Verse 9 says, he has dispersed. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. His horn shall be exalted with honor. My, my, my. <laughs> this chapter is loaded. It is. And it all goes back to verse 1. Now, in the upcoming episodes, we're going to spend a lot of time digging in verse 1. Because it's connected. You can see how verse 1 is affecting this man's life in every way. And so we want to make sure we're good doers of verse one because then we won't have to worry about two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We won't have to struggle with those. Many people are out struggling trying to get wealth and riches when it's connected to verse one. If we would just do what's in verse one, wealth and riches are part of the package. Amen. And so we're going to take time to dig into this. You don't want to miss it. And so we invite you, be in the upcoming, be watching the upcoming episodes because there's so much for your life. Yes, it's connected to your health. Yes, it's connected to your home. Yes, it's connected to everything important to your life. It's connected to the plan of God. Amen. So we're so grateful that you've taken the time to join us. I tell you what, um, the word will rewrite the story of your life. It will give you a brand new, not just ending, but a brand new today. And so we, we thank you for taking the time to sit and feed on the word with us. And uh, remember this, as you hear this word and as you leave today, as we sign off today, remember Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. In this book by Nancy Dufresne, God the Revealer of Secrets, you will learn how to know God's perfect will for your life and how to accomplish that divine plan. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.